First at five, people begin to return home to the Estacada area. The Riverside fire was threatening the town, but evacuation levels are now down from level three to level two. The sheriff's office has been busy patrolling the area, keeping an eye out for burglars trying to take advantage of the situation. Pat Doris is live in Estacada. So Pat, there is some bad news out there, but also good news too. Right, Laurel, the sheriff's office has made 13 arrests of people in those evacuation zones that weren't supposed to be there. But I also want to tell you about the community pantry here. It's helping people who are returning to their homes in the Estacada area. And when we were over there, you could really feel the gratefulness of the people who are coming in. East of Oregon City in Estacada, love arrives by the trunk full. Oh, it's amazing. Our community is, I just have goosebumps right now. Kelly Keith returned to her evacuated home last night. It's still standing, but much of the food is ruined. And now she's picking up free supplies from a community pantry that sprang to life just three days ago. It's staffed by volunteers like Scott Adams, a roofer from Milwaukee who loves the forests and the streams and the people here. They needed help, so I just came down to do what I can. Amy Hudson, principal of Estacada High, is helping too. Just wanted to help my community. I mean, this I don't live here, but there, this is my second home, and so just wanted to be able to reach out and do whatever I could to, to just help our, our family and our communities. I heard that a lot out here. It came from people like Pierre Du Bois, who now lives in Portland, but graduated from Estacada High in 1965. He just had to donate. To help old friends, neighbors, what do you think about what happened out here? Terrible, terrible. I got friends that still live out here. They lost their homes, lost everything. So I'm just, I was blessed, so I'm blessing, trying to bless somebody else. Jennifer West and her family brought supplies from their home in Boring. Well, we wanted to do what we could to help. You know, there's a lot of people that lost everything that they own, and so we wanted to bring clothing, toys, blankets, you know. It's still unclear exactly how many homes the Riverside Fire destroyed east of Estacada. It came within a half mile, maybe even closer to town. The incident commander told Sheriff Craig Roberts there is still a lot of fire in the forest, but crews will keep the town safe. When things start drying out or we start getting some winds, we want the communities to be protected. That's where our firefighters are focusing. The sheriff led us out into the countryside looking for citizen firefighters taking to the smoky woods to cut fire lines on their own. We did not find them, but I did get a chance to talk to Roberts about what a wild two weeks it's been. As I've kind of described it as just a, a full court press. And we're, uh, you know, now I, I believe moving more into kind of this marathon mode. This isn't going to be over anytime soon. Which brings us back to the free food and clothing pantry in Estacada. Yes, those who drive through leave with food and clothing to tide them over for a few days. But those who volunteer are getting something too. The connection of a community that helps others when they are down. You know, the emotions that they bring bring out just in being thankful and loving it's it, it gets me emotional you know um it's it's amazing i can't even put into words how how good it feels to be able to help and it's wonderful to see they'll be here for at least the next week helping folks as they settle back in i also wanted to let you know i just had a chance to go up past the roadblock about 10 miles on highway 224 it was my first time up in there i got up into the blackened area with the sheriff and the devastation is complete really there are trees that are just sticks that are standing up and trees that are down on the edge of the roads i have some pictures i'll be posting on kgw.com back to you and regarding the volunteer efforts like kelly said in your story it does give you goosebumps thank you pat as you probably noticed is another day of really smoky skies across oregon and even seemed kind of worse today but we could finally feel some relief soon chief meteorologist matt safino is here now and matt we're all hoping for that rain and some smoke free skies yeah we certainly are and there are showers beginning to develop across western oregon right now it was around this time that we expected to see the beginning of a change and it is starting to happen i can even if i if you look straight up you can see a blue tint to the sky, which I haven't seen much of in the last week. This is the most recent satellite imagery and the clouds you're seeing from Salem, Eugene down to Roseburg, Medford and Ashland. Pretty new. These are just developing during the afternoon hours here. I'll go back to that and you can watch that process uh, undergo. 
yeah, or take over and you can see those clouds are developing northward. So again, that's where our showers will be coming from on Doppler radar. The green you see around Portland is just ground clutter, but we are seeing our first cell develop now to the west of Eugene, and this is quite a bit more robust than it was just a few minutes ago. Our most recent radar update showing that cell developing. No lightning yet. There's a few more between uh, Roseburg and Eugene right along I-5, as you can see. And we expect many, many more of these to develop during the nighttime hours. And some of them will develop into th thunderstorms, some of which could be strong enough to drop heavy enough rain on the fire scars, the burn areas that Pat Doris was just telling about. And we'll be posting pictures to KGW.com in a few minutes. Um, the rain could be heavy enough. If it falls on those burned areas, there's nothing to hold the soil anymore. So that's why we've got the potential for flash flooding, debris flows, landslides and mud flows. So we'll be keeping a close eye on that as we go through the evening hour. So here's the bottom line for you. Showers and thunderstorms beginning to develop now. They will develop from south to north across the port across western Oregon. Really, some of the storms may be strong enough to drop some really heavy rain. That's the good news unless it's on a fire scar. We'll get some strong winds. That's good if you want to mix out smoke. You don't want strong erratic winds near the fires, though, so that's a potential concern. The most likely time for rain in the Portland area, I think, will be after 11 o'clock tonight. But we'll be watching it carefully. It can develop really fast. Laurel, back to you. Well, that's a really mixed bag there. Thank you, Matt. We'll check with you in a few minutes. And because of those storms in the forecast, fire crews are shutting down the perimeter of the Holiday Farm fire that has decimated parts of Lane County, and they're keeping all non-essential people out. This starts at 6 o'clock this evening for at least 24 hours. Residents who haven't evacuated should either stay home or evacuate right now before 6 o'clock. Do not drive within the fire perimeter during that time. It could be really dangerous. Commanders are worried about falling trees and rocks in addition to the fire. We feel so blessed. I mean, had we not been on that river, we would have died. There is just no way that we could have got out of that fire. A couple and their cat survived the Beachy Creek fire by waiting it out in the Santiam River for seven hours. They thought they might not make it out alive, but they did thanks to hope and a little song. Keely Chalmers has their story. We're clear. For musician Scott Sky Johnson, rivers have always been a source of inspiration and hope. Sister Earth. It's not surprising he wrote most of his music at his home perched above the Sani Am River, a home he, his wife Mary Beth, and their cat Tuku shared. A home filled with happiness and often song. That was on a 50 foot cliff overlooking the Sani Am, and it was the most gorgeous, amazing place you could imagine. But in the early hours of Tuesday, September 8th, the music stopped. The couple woke to an orange glow outside the window. The wildfire was racing toward them. And I even grabbed the keys thinking, well, maybe I can get that car up the driveway. But the minute I stepped out the door, it was just a wall of flames. They knew they had only one place to go. We thank that river every day. The couple grabbed Tuku and ran and down a 30-foot embankment through the flames to the Saniam River below. And we're looking up and down the river as far as we can see on both sides is raging like 40 foot wall of flames with fire all around them the johnsons and their cats stayed on a log in the frigid water for seven hours they passed the time by singing a song you got to know what it knows and we will lift each other and they sang as they watched their home studio all their musical instruments burn our land is like a unrecognizable moonscape it's like a pile of twisted metal where my studio was. It was what most of the Gates community looked like. Yet Scott doesn't dwell on what he's lost. He's celebrating what he's gained. That is the, the unrealized miracle of all this is just how much love is out there for us and that we yeah, for others. In fact, the computer Scott did this Zoom interview on, offered up by a friend, the clothes he's wearing, his apartment, car, the list goes on, all donated. You know, we've just kind of lived our life in this way of, uh, you know, giving what we could, when we could, 
and it feels like it's just all coming back. It's, it's so beautiful. A beauty expressed by the countless thoughts and prayers of others. And that water pouring from my eyes. And a life-saving river that continues to inspire. In Portland, Keeley Chalmers, KGW News. Oh my gosh, are you t uh, just choked up like I am? That story just brings tears to my eyes. What a terrifying story, but also beautiful too. Uh, there's so much need out there. You've heard about all the loss. If you want to help with wildfire relief, you can contribute to the KGW Northwest Response Fund. You can donate right now at kgw.com forward slash Red Cross. You heard there how much people appreciate it. We thank you for all your support. In just one week, your generosity has helped raise one and a half million dollars. But the need is far greater. Please keep those donations coming in.